Golden Gate Park, San Francisco. That's when all the parks had closed just before all that. So that's when we were just street skating all the time. And I was also BMX freestyling. So we'd go cruise around and freestyle in the park and I'd skate, you know, I was like, whatever. And it just contest popped up. I'm like, oh yeah, because I used to enter contests in the 70s. I have, you know, trophies from 77. Slalom champ, downhill champ, barrel jump champ. <laughs> you know, I was like, you know, whatever, 10 years old. So when that contest came around, I was like, oh, I'll enter. You know, I wasn't sponsored or anything. I finally got a complete board from Santa Cruz, I believe, and I was totally bummed because they gave whoever the pro was who got second a hundred bucks because I wasn't professional. I was like, I mean, I came from nothing. We're pretty, pretty poor. Not at that point. The second street contest, which was in Golden Gate Park, street style. The day before, we were skating Joe Lopes' ramp. Me and a friend are sitting on the roof drinking some beer because I'd slammed really hard. And I was like, oh. Sitting on the roof, and Stacy Peralta comes up to me and says, hey, I like the way you skate. You talking to me? You know? It's like, wow. I was like, okay, thanks. So the next day was a contest, and he had uh, spoken with my brother about uh, sponsoring me. I was like, no, you're kidding me, man. And he's like, no, I'm serious. That's how it started. They're talking about doing one of one of those like classic or legend contests of street skating. You know how they do for vert. You know they're talking about it for street. I'm like, no, never, never go out there like some old man flopping around on a street course. No, no way. Yapple dapple, probably. Shack wackled my dillet or you know I don't know, man. Oh, those are so bad. It was from a cartoon like a, about a genie. He would say that, I don't know what it was. Yapple dapple, bzzz, you know. And he would turn something into a sandwich. We were late for a demo because the van broke down. So we arrived, thousands of kids, just, ah, you know. What they said is, hey, follow us out of here. We'll get you out of here. Oh, okay, you guys got to leave, you know. Followed them. They took us to the police station. So we get there, you know, and we're like, what? wait, what? What's going on here? And then they started telling us that they're getting the charges with inciting a riot. This is the very beginning of the tour. It was perfect. Like, oh, this is how tour starts. Rad. They didn't book us. They finally let us go. I don't remember if they cuffed us. I don't think so. I don't think they went that far. I can't, I can't remember. They beat us with night sticks and napalm. Which cut am I gonna do today? Okay, V-neck, just short sleeve, maybe some tassels on, maybe not, maybe some venting. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> nah, good. They tried to stuff me in their van. It was like they're trying to kidnap me. And I pulled out my knife. What would you do? First time I met Mark was in Venice Beach at a freestyle contest. He was there with a buddy of his and he was riding like one Sure Grip truck and one X brand or something. And he, Cause he used to go to Veriflex and go dumpster diving and get all his gear out of the dumpster. So he had like a Veriflex board, like super beat, two different trucks. I was like, what's up with this kid? He was doing backside ollies, like alley-ooping backside ollies to pivot on this little wall. And I was just like, what? What are you doing? And he knew, like, from the magazines, like, oh, one day I'm gonna beat you, you know, at some, you know, street. I'm like, yeah, you probably will. So I, we're, we're hanging out skating, and he, and he says that to me. And he had, like, a buddy who was, like, his sort of, like, personal flavor flav unit, you know, like, hyping Mark him up. Yo, this is Mark, you know, like, it was hilarious. But we became friends, and so he used to come up and stay with me in San Francisco. And my mom was like, your friend is so bizarre. Cause he would say the most off the wall stuff and he would split at night. He'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go eat sushi. I'm like, okay, see you later. And I'm like getting worried, like where's Mark? Where's like Mark? And he finally comes back. I'm like, where were you? He's like, oh, I was skating all night. I know he won a contest, but it was one that I don't think I was at. I mean, not saying, don't get me wrong, but he was never the contest skater ever because he would try the gnarliest thing 20 times till he made it. You know, Mark would push the jump ramp up to the rail and try to do front board up the rail to the deck, you know, his whole run. So he, he was not never a contest skater. I think he might have won one that I know of as, as a pro, but I'm not quite sure. The travels and stuff, so they just tend to blur together because so many of them were just the same over and over and over. But we were skating, there was a vert demo in, in London. This kid comes up, hey, you guys want to come to my house for dinner? You know, blah, blah, blah. And someone's like, that's uh, George Harrison's son. He was a skater, Danny, you know? I think his mom was with him. And she's like, oh yeah, we'll send a car for you. We're like, okay. So a car comes, takes, and we arrive at his castle, his castle. There's underground ca caverns that you can take a boat ride through that you cruise around underneath his property. 
It was amazing. It was a couple days after Roy Orbison had passed away, so he was really down, you know, because they had the traveling uh, Wilburys band. Those guys were off goofing around. I, I, it was me and George sitting on his lawn, drinking beer, just talking. Just like, just me and him. You know, and I was like, but I didn't trip because I was never, I was like, uh, George Harrison? Uh. Until later, I'm like, wow, that was weird. How did that even happen, you know? Me and Jim Thibault, Mike V were on tour. We used to use Tiger Bomb like head to toe. So me and Jim are, you know, the ankles, everything getting ready. Jump ramp demo, here we come. And Mike V's like, he didn't know what Tiger Bomb was. He's like, what's that stuff? He's like, oh, it gets really warm and it really heats up your joints. He's like, no, it doesn't. I'm like, yeah, it does. He, he wouldn't believe us. I think Jim or me, you know, one, it was like, put it on your balls. <laughs> Whatever. Puts on balls. Tiger Bomb, on your nuts. You know, we're in a van. He has nowhere to go. Inevitably, it starts heating up, and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. He starts totally freaking out. I was like, I'm trying to rub it off. And me and Theo are just cracking up, man. Just, oh, it was so funny. And I remember we got back to the hotel, and he was all pissed, and you know, we're all fighting. He's like trying to fight us, you know. It was, it was hilarious. It was so good. McGill smoked a uh, hash. We were in Europe, and we were taking trains around to demos, and he had never smoked it, and he gets super stoned. So the next day, he's like, oh man, I feel weird, I feel all messed up. And I'm like, whatever, man, get, get over it. You know, like, oh, we're on the train to the next demo. Show up at this demo. The first demo is like an eight-foot-wide vert ramp. Oh man, I felt for those dudes. And he's, of course, got to do a McTwist. Like, McTwist, McTwist. Everyone's shouting it. Like, no one could have done a 540 on that thing, man. Didn't, didn't make it, right? Of course, whole demo. Didn't pull it. He was totally bummed. It's like, oh man. He's like, I don't know, man. man I shouldn't have smoked that stuff, uh, I don't know. And it was Stevie, I think, who, you know, sort of making fun of him, like, you know, you might have killed your McTis McTwist brain cells. And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, you, you might have killed your brain cells with that, you know, with that hash. Totally messing with him. But Mike, you know, Mike's um, pretty reserved. So we catch on to what Stevie's doing, and we're like, yeah, dude, perpetuate this idea that he killed his McTwist brain cells. Next demo, doesn't make the 540 again. So then we're like, yes, we're gonna drive this home. We're like, dude, you da you're damaged, you're done. You're McTwist over, you killed your brain cells, dude. You, you, that, that has killed your brain cells. you McTwist brain cells. <laughs> I think by the fourth demo, he had finally made it. But literally, like three demos, he couldn't make it. And that was when it was really big. It was all the McTwist. That's Mike McGill. We don't want to see anything else. It was rad. Poor Mike. Sorry, Mike. Dude, I've basically been to jail three times for skateboarding. It sounds fake, but I lived it. And I don't really lie. 